Greetings folks, welcome back to The Seth Show and today I will be giving you my thoughts on number I don't even know anymore where I will be sharing with you my thoughts on The Swiss Family Robinson by Johann Weiss. This is the required reading book for the English grade 8 paces, well, at least for me. And I just read summaries at the time, Wikipedia, etc. Don't deduce my grades, teacher, please. And now I just recently read it. I finished this like less than a month ago, early December. So yeah, it was great. It was wonderful. Definitely up there with one of my favorite books that I've read for ACE paces, but not the best in my opinion. Now you may be wondering, what, Seth, why are you wearing like such intricate attire? I mean, if you, if I stand, you know, I'm wearing a vest and then I'm wearing this big, this big coat and then I'm wearing a blue necktie. I, I don't even know. Actually, no, because the setting of this book is like 1700s, just after the United States was founded. So around that time. So, you know, just to get into attire a little. <laughs> um, okay, let's get to the review. The Swiss Family Robinson features a family of Swiss, I assume, because it says Swiss Family Robinson, of Swiss uh, people, passengers, who were going to the New World, to America, to as settlers. They get stranded in an island. They're shipwrecked in an island. It's actually not clear where, because it's, it's very weird. And let's just say they're shipwrecked in an island. Uh, it's just them, the family, and then they have to survive with what they have. Now, it isn't a traditional story like Twice Freed or what's the other one that I read? Or even other books that I've read like Noli Metanghere or most storybooks. It, the, the plot is they get stranded in an island and then they live there. The next like 50 chapters from the first chapter is the, just them living there and making use with what they have, what they brought with them, what they were able to salvage from the shipwreck. And there's no like central plot line na, okay, this is gonna happen, this person wants to get here. You know, that's one of the weird things that I realized. I mean, it's completely fine to have a book that doesn't have a central plot line per se and just show like their daily routine. But what was weird for me was like, it was only mentioned in like chapter 40 after like 10 years that they were in an, in, stranded in the island. Only then is the first mention of going home or escaping or getting out of that island mentioned. I am just, I, it is unfathomable for me. And another weird thing I noticed about this book is the fact that as soon as they get to the island unwillingly it was completely out of the plan they get stranded there as soon as they're there they're just like the, none of them say oh no how do we get out of here oh no let's uh let's get a fire signal so that other ships passing by can see us let's try to escape let's make a boat to escape none of them say that they're instantly just like okay we're here we're stranded we're living here for the rest of our lives they set up houses they set up so many things it's amazing how no one thought of escaping. Another weird thing that I noticed in this book is the dad, who's from whose point of view the story is being told. It's told in first person. The dad is just so incredibly talented. Like, I don't know if this guy is a manifestation of Einstein and other famous smart people, but he just knows everything. Hey dad, can you make a machine that can, an uh, a rowing machine for the boat. Oh, yes, I'll figure that out. Okay, I put some clogs together, whatever. Boom, we have a rowing machine. Hey, Dad, can you make like a... Can you determine how to make this thing? Okay, a according to these calculations. Boom, he makes that thing. It's uh, it's unbelievable. Maybe it's just because I'm bad, probably. So yeah, the story is told in the way that each chapter is like its own story, but they all build up. Like the events of the last chapter happened in the next chapter, but you don't necessarily have to read the last chapter in order to read the second chapter. That sounds wrong, but 
it kind of makes sense because each one is its own story. Each one is its own little adventure. Like in this chapter, they set up a treehouse. In this chapter, they get butter, I think. In this chapter, they tame an ostrich. Spoiler warning. So they're all just their own little stories, which is all fine. Another thing I have with this book is that at the very end, all of a sudden, the conclusion just happens. There's no build-up. There is nothing. The conclusion just all of a sudden happens. And I find it... I don't know. I don't know. That type of story writing isn't really my cup of tea. Wow, so British. It's a little weird for me. Yes, I've said that like second, twice, thrice already. Okay, I think I've said too many negatives about this book. Let's get to the positives. It, this book is a master at describing details, sensory details. Like when the characters are here, it says, okay, the, the curve of the island and then all of the trees. It just describes it in such masterful detail that I c personally couldn't keep all the details in my mind. I just, f I just forgot a lot of them because they just describe everything and it's beautiful. You know, I just wish I was able to trace, uh, track it all down, keep it all in my mind. But because there are paragraphs upon paragraphs of just, just describing like what they see and it's marvelous. That's one of the main uh, pros of this, well not necessarily pros, but one of the main things that this book does right. Now, story time. Back when I was grade 8, when it was a requirement in the first quarter to read this book for the English spaces, it was just terrible. Because you'd be doing your English space and then it'll say, Read chapters 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 of the Swiss Family Robinson. And you're like, wow, that's a lot of chapters. And especially when you consider that the words are like tiny. Look at that. The words are tiny. And then you're just going to read through all this. This was a drag to read through. I mean, probably the first half of the book, I swept through it pretty quickly. We're reading a couple chapters a day. But after the second half, it just became so slow. You know, adventures that would usually be whimsical and fantasy-esque just become just diminish into everyday routines because it just happens every chapter every chapter there's a new adventure that's so whimsical that's so amazing that the everything else just becomes routine or frankly boring um there's not really much else to be said about the book. It's very good, despite all the negative stuff I said about it. Trust me, I love it. I love it. It's, I'm just being critical. It's very good. I recommend you reading it. Oh, before I forget, tips on how to do the English spaces of grade 8 that require your reading this book. What, uh, I remember there would be pages just full of questions, and then it'll say, on a separate paper, um, answer all these questions and you'll get those answers from the books. Look at the questions first. This is what I did, this is what I recommended you doing in God's Tribesman, I think, or even Twice Freed. Look, or even Noli Metanger, look at the question, Rem keep that in mind, and when you read through the chapter, you should be able to stumble upon the answer of that question. You'll say, oh, okay, that's uh, that the question was, what did they do here? Oh, that's what they did. Okay, write that down. Read the next question. Don't, don't do what it wants you to do, with all due respect. Don't do what it wants you to do and just read like the four chapters straight away and then try answering the questions. That can definitely work, but for most cases, especially mine and my friends, I've found that it's a lot easier to read it with the question in mind. One stop answer the question, look at the next question, read, etc, etc, rinse, repeat, and then you'll get it done. That is the best way that you can finish your English space if this is your book that you are reading. Grade 8 first quarter for us. Anyway, it was a wonderful read. I've been very critical about it, just had to get all of those out. Besides that, despite what I've been saying so far, it's wonderful. I definitely recommend it to you. If you're an ACE student, read it. It's worth it. You might want to request it even before your English spaces ask for it because it's a very long read. I mean, completely up to you. If you're not an ACE student, you should definitely still read this. It is wonderful, very good at sensory details and descriptions and all that. Wonderful. Johann Weiss was a, 
uh, was brilliant with this book. Just fantastic. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. It's getting quite hot because the windows are closed despite it's being January 2021 in Parnaca City. Th thank you very much for watching and see you next time.